nice. right? And, and nothing wrong with admitting that, so that, so that there was there was only so much we could have actually done to impose or do anything that we have concern. And that just that just the, and the that it, pertains to the minister of sport too. Yes, yes, yes. If if he if a minister of sport and a government and they have precedent for this, right, gets involved in a sport, they could be banned. And it has had some sports right now that, that may not be able to part countries may not be able to participate at the Olympic Games because of perceived government mm -hmm. government interference. interference yeah. it, it's a difficult thing, as I said. Um Could it reach a point where we send no athlete? Yes. Mm. The, the Olympic Committee is very clear that it will look at all its options on the basis of, of its policies and procedures. And one of them is that we have a role, a duty a responsibility and a, an obligation to ensure that our selection processes and i'm saying our now because we're talking now about all this has passed who is going to represent trinidad and tobago right. there's one spot we left have, then. right we have a duty to make sure that that is done in a manner that can stand international scrutiny and if we go to the high court because at the end of the day regardless of all who feel that you know and this is not about ego we have to pay the bill in literally if it is that that, sure, that, right. that we lose a case and and, mm -hmm. and and whatever we have to pay and therefore we have to make sure that you know we we we, we have done everything possible and the correct way all and the, the procedures dotted i's cross t's but this is terribly unfortunate i mean i must say that because um we should be celebrating now we and we're be not celebrating, it will but, be but also you know the effort i mean yeah you know again we have to re retain this neutrality so we have to look out for all the athletes as i said one would have who's been looking out for all the athletes i'm asking this who is looking out for the athlete that mm. has any because you you can look out for them for a certain extent correct under the umbrella under your legal constraints who is looking out for any athlete out there that run into problems like Blue this. Selling barbecue tickets or anything. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that, that the, the the sport administrators have to do everything possible to create the environment. Um, but at a particular point, I think we'll all agree, even in our own lives, you have to take responsibility mm -hmm. for what you're doing. But but again, th this is a situation that I think it'll be very difficult for anybody to say that they athletes in this case the two athletes had any control of, None, of what yeah. would have happened they had literally had, and that is a sense of frustration for any athlete all of us who have played sport you see what you want to as an athlete athletes understand so i show either of these two, uh, two athletes would have understood it is a competitive environment somebody have to win somebody have to lose but at the end of the day you accept that yes you cry yes you get frustrated you, you come and you go again one thing no athlete and nobody who is passionate about sport can take is when you perceive that you're unfair you either get cheated or something mm -hmm. wasn't right and and that is the important thing that is where sports administrators have a responsibility when you when you making decisions that impact the lives of young people athletes human beings you have to be beyond reproach even though you yourself not you know, you're human. And I was telling somebody on another um, thing just now. What people don't understand is that when the system and administrators get it wrong, it have dire, dire consequences. Last week, everybody here would have read about a cricketer. A young cricketer. A young budding athlete was murdered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many people really put into their consciousness the fact that the person who has been held and alleged to have committed that crime is a very talented young boxer. Sad. <laughs> and, uh, you know, young athletes, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because young athletes looking at this case and, and wondering, because I, I, I read an, a post yesterday on somebody on Facebook saying, what are they telling us as young people? That hard work and dedication <laughs> don't work. Because it's almost like you don't get the rewards from the seeing it here. Tame has worked for 17 years to this and, and literally the door closed in her face. What do we tell young athletes who feel hopeless like this man uh, who allegedly killed somebody because I guess out of frustration. The system, the system, system failed right? so many of our athletes. That's right. What do you tell a young athlete listening this morning <laughs> that have dreams and just feel hopeless? Me personally? Yeah. <laughs> 
All as can, president. All I can tell a young athlete is don't give up hope. And they may say, yeah, yeah, right. But each of us have had to overcome adversity. Um, I cannot erase what has happened. Um, all we can do is, is try to now deal with what we have to deal with in a fair, transparent, accountable manner that would at least give people the glimmer of hope that even if one athlete or the other has to make a sacrifice, it's not going to be for anything. It's going to be towards putting a better th a better system, system in place. place. Well said. Mm -hmm. yeah. And with that being said, Brian, um, quickly before we close, give us a sense of understanding as to where we are right now with respect to the Trinidad and Tobago Olympic Committee. We're preparing for Rio. Mm -hmm. It's not far away. Four months. It's in four months' time. Mm -hmm. You understand? We already have some athletes qualified. Tell us the athletes again, Brian, who's qualified. Alisa Chow in rowing. Mm -hmm. That's a big surprise. Yes. Mm -hmm. Joseph, ex in Joseph Convon. Yeah, yeah. Ay, 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 is, ay. This, is this the first time we've qualified for rowing? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And right. mm -hmm. yeah. We have Nigel yeah. Paul. Also the first time we have a, we have a super, super heavyweight box boxer. Boxer. Ay, 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 ay. boxer we have Jocene Philip qualifying yeah, for the second, yeah, mm -hmm. second time. Mm -hmm. Andrew Lewis. I yeah. mean, on second Olympics, and I think everybody knows the challenges he's yep. overcoming. And um, as Rudy said, he's a rower too. <laughs> <laughs> you follow me, Rudy? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so I have to tell him that. He don't and then we have um, George Bovell. Yes. Yeah. And uh, what about people like Kishon and Cleopatra? They're still on the. Yeah, they're still, still very much qualify. as a matter of fact. Um, it will all culminate for them um, once they have achieved the qualifying standard. Right. They have to participate at their national senior championship. So the list is still growing. Yes, we will probably take 35. I, I'm, I'm anticipating we'll take 35 athletes. You need any MC to... <laughs> yeah, we could look at that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm, and oh, you know... Boy, Nikki, yeah. you're trying to squeeze in my thing. I don't have my thing. Oh, 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 cool. Let's see. You're not bilingual. I can see me. Welcome us to Brazil. I want to welcome us to Trinidad and Tobago. Oh! You need somebody who's bilingual. Yeah, 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 yeah. You ain't got that, Jagger. Brian, uh, we know you're under pressure. We appreciate you coming in this morning, clearing up some things. And uh, you see, I don't bite hard. But I have a, I have a quick question, right? Because mm -hmm. I now kind of understand the last child is killing money. I now understand the legal aspect of it because I was all caught up in my emotions and stuff, but now understanding the legal aspect as a young person and somebody who working hard. You understand? Um, in terms of the authority now, is it that if the decision was left up to you, if the rules and regulations were set that you had the last say, you think the process would have been easier? Yes, on the basis of how the TTOC um, operates and mm -hmm. its experience with, with the other national sporting organizations. Right. Yeah, it, it's all about process. Um, so then again, we need to look into that then. Do we have a local arbitration team? No? <laughs> <laughs> no? Just asking. But wait, I thought I was the last no, one. That's no, the no, one quick. Yeah, yeah. No, well, no, well, well, usually yeah. there is some discussion about setting up an alternative, a dispute res sport dispute resolution. Because that would help before we reach but the usually legal what status. Happens, yeah, but what happens is that, as I said, there was a matter related to this that was sent to the Olympic Committee for some advice and counsel. So we usually we, we um, play that role. But, um, you know, Trinidad and Trinidad, uh, we, we are passionate and emotion filled mm -hmm. mm -hmm. people. So we care passionately, we get angry passionately. Mm -hmm. We cuss and, um, passionately. We cuss yeah. passionately. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any last words, Brian? Um, continue to support. I know it's a difficult situation. Don't lose faith, don't lose hope. Um, remember, we still aspiring to win ten or more Olympic gold medals. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Also, give them um, some information as to where, because people need to remember too. The the committee still looking for help financially to where to get oh, yeah. these <laughs> hopeful thirty five. Well, thirty five plus me, thirty six. Nikki, hopefully thirty seven. Right, hello, hello, hello. So wetty, thirty eight, so and we need, need a DJ thirty nine, right? <laughs> We need Wrong it after 40, my mother might want to come. <laughs> we need support. I know there's a couple things that you all do in with respect yeah, to we support. Have like the, um, the, the jerseys, uh, what we call the Team TTO Club. Uh -huh. right. T-shirt club, that, that's available at the fan club. Right. Um, we're starting up very soon, launching a very excited um, text donation uh, program. Right. Um, we have a uh, Scotia Bank, 171188. And then... Um, Hopefully next year, everybody in this room would, would, would join us in the marathon walk. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just keep us cool. informed and we'll keep informing the public. So that's what we're that talking about, yes, guys. Yes, Brian, let us, I am Let there. us continue to support. Yes, we support supporting Tima, but let's also support the, the entire the Trinidad. When is that? 
29th of January, 2016. All right, all right. 26.2 right. miles. 2017, you mean? 2016. Only oh, one just went. No, 2017. No, That's what presidents is doing, you know. I confuse you. What trouble is this? All right, then. Thank you, Brian. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much. Here. I feel the like loser to box there. They're like, <laughs> whew, you're a little lighter than when you came <laughs> Can I say one more thing? Yes, you I, can. On the way here, I learned about the um, the passing of CG, yes. yeah. who comes mm-hmm. from a very um, sporting family, the Silmans Hockey. Yes. So I'd like to extend condolences to CG yeah, and his family. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you so much. And that's our yes, president why? of the TTOC.